Reese McNally in the Stratco Commodore. Mango Credit Ford on the other side of the front row. Gary McDonald, series veteran, very crafty racing driver. Ryan Hansford, the son of the 93, great race winner, Greg. He's on row two with Cam McCongrel. Away we go. Seven laps scheduled. Let's see how many of them we get through. On board with Kim Jane. Has had a nightmare weekend. Let's see if he can push his way up through the order as they hustle through turn one. On board, Craig Donis, Thirsty Camel Commodore. They've re-signed with Craig for next season to extend that partnership to its fifth season. We ride on board the NZ in car. Um, there's a car off to the right, James. Where's he going? Well, he's certainly not going the right way, that's for sure. Looks like, apart from that little incident, everybody got through turn one nice and safely. McNally leads the field into turn two for the first time. Can they all make it up to the cutting? There's Tom Williamson, former Formula Ford racer, driving the number one car this weekend. Back on board with Kim Jane. They broke the timing chain in practice one. They had a steering drama in P2. They overheated in qualifying, and they lost power in race one. He's having a great time. Yeah, I'm sure Kim uh, would like to start the weekend over for sure. We Obviously, the last time we saw him, he was on his roof, to be frank. So uh, maybe they're having a few, I guess, reoccurring problems with that car from that incident way back in Darwin in June. McNally out in front. A couple of days testing at Malala have been great for the young guy. Oh, Jack Ellsgood with a, a flapping rear bumper, but a bit of technical updates in terms of the series coming into this weekend. They've introduced the control gearbox, so all the Holden drivers and the four drivers have the same gear ratios now, and there's also new suspension, which is five-way adjustable and just a bit funky for you racing, really, isn't it? Five ways of adjustable suspension. Sounds like five ways to confuse yourself, <laughs> if you ask me, Noons. And just on the gearbox thing, that's always been a bone of contention in the Ute category because sometimes the gearbox ratios in the Commodore have suited certain tracks as opposed to certain tracks that have suited the Falcons. Now everybody's the same, so that can't be, I guess, a parity issue. Chris Walton made a move there on Nathan Pretty and went on by down at the elbows. They rumble down Conrad McNally. He's got McDonald coming for him. Side by side there with Pretty and Walton. Listen to this. It's on at Caltex Chase. McNally defending. Remember, he got the inversion. Tenth in race one to pole for race two. Better be careful here. Needs to give McDonald room. He does. And look at McConville. He's going to fire straight down the inside too. So McConville using all his experience of racing. He's going to slide through on McNally as well. Great move by McDonald to go around the outside on the exit of the chase. McConville th follows him through in the Bundaberg Commodore. And McDonald, the round winner here in 2009, knows his way around. He's part of the Cedars team this weekend. New FG Falcon, they're running multiple cars again, but McConville through to second, McNally back to third, then Ryan Hansford, then Andrew Fisher, then Nathan Pretty. It's all the familiar suspects running at the front, though. So a relatively clean start to this reverse grid race, but keep an eye on for those quick guys coming through the field that, of course, had to start from 10th or better in this second race. Turn two, the climb. Griffin's bend, McDonald leading. McNally just a little wide up over that exit curb. Remember, too, there's actually test drives in V8 supercars up for grabs with HRT and FPR in their 2012 machinery next year for the top Holden and top Ford finishing driver in the championship in the Ute Series. Great initiative from both companies and V8 Utes as well, but I think if Nathan Pretty gets up and wins, that can't be right. He's done that many Bathurst 1000s and V8 races. It's probably very hands hands to someone else. Well, this year is the first time he hasn't been in the main race, the V8 supercar race, since 1998. Can you believe it? So he's proven he knows how to pedal a V8 supercar, but he can also pedal a V8 Ute, that's for sure. Across the top of the mountain, and it's going to be a hectic second half of the V8 Ute series. We've only done four rounds coming into this weekend, but basically wherever V8 supercars go for the rest of the year in Australia, the Utes will be with them. So that's here, the Gold Coast, Winton, and Sydney Olympic Park for the Sydney Telstra 500 to round out the year. And it's a really tight championship fight, but it's a really tight fight for the lead at the front. Look at Walton trying to get a move done on Nathan Pretty. And Ryle Harris just taking his time, not getting too carried away here. He's got seven laps. He's got to make up nine spots for 10th on the grid. He's got time on his side. And he's certainly been fast this weekend. Broke the race lap record in the first race, partly due to the upgraded suspension that the category um, has brought it forward this weekend. 
but McDonald doing a nice job in front of McConville so far, but still a long way to go in this race. Back in the pack, Harris having a look at the back of Chris Walton. Reese McNally, straight to O'Connor. Here's a shot. Hansford slow, made a mistake. Fisher will grab him. Fresh from a trip to the Denny Ute Muster. Talk about inspiring yourself for a trip to Bathurst. Nathan Pretty now trying to lunge and Hansford's under fire here. You make one mistake and it will affect you for at least half a lap. He slides up off the final corner. Does Ryan Hansford look like he might have missed a gear uh, coming out of the chase there? That's why he was vulnerable to Pretty in the last corner. But Harris now up the inside of Chris Walton into turn one. So that's one more position further up he goes. This is Danny Bazantic, Auto 1 replay. Kim Jane out wide. Kept it straight, could have been worse. He's really struggling. He's having a very frustrating weekend, Kim Jane. would expect him to be running top 10 at least. He's a regular front runner. He's been a contender in the series over the course of the last, well, as many years as you can remember. But he comes into the weekend seventh in the championship. He will slip this weekend for sure. We just spotted before there a black and orange meatball flag given to Jack Ellsgood. So unfortunately, that bit of uh, rear body work that you spotted early in the race, Jack's going to have to come to pit lane to get that fixed, which it's one of those things. Jack wouldn't have caused that. It would have been caused by somebody running up his backside, and uh, he's going to pay the penalty for it. But Harris now, he's on a big move. He's up the inside of Pretty. Good comparison here of speed. Pretty with his nose in front towards Caltex Chase. Cedars, remember, he's in a title fight. He's right behind them, keeping a watchful brief. Harris around the outside. Oh, in front two. Hansford with a little bit of a lockup, trying to hang on to things. But we jump back on board with Craig Donis in the Thirsty Camel Commodore. Watch for Al's good to peel off Ooh. this time by noons through the dust. Looking, looking, yep, he'll respond. Here he comes. Look at this, Harrison Pretty still going at it, but it's been a good hard race without too much panel crashing going on. That's why they're at the front. That's why they're one, two in the points. You don't get to that position in the championship unless you play it smart. There's McDonald, leads the way. Massive crowd here for the 50th year celebration race at the Super Cheap Auto Bathurst 1000. Cedars down the inside, little bit of a rub, and that's let Harris get away. It certainly has. Andrew Fisher slipped into second, so we didn't see that. He's got by Cameron McConville, but don't go away. We'll have more of race two after the break. Bathurst with the Auto 1 V8 Ute Series. While we were away, there's been a little bit going on, but nothing you wouldn't expect. David Cedars and Chris Walton getting into it down at the Forest Salvo. Peter Burnett turning Haley Swanson around into the wall. And they managed to keep going, but up front, it's a teammate fight. These two cars, Gary McDonald and Andrew Fisher, both come from the Cedars Racing Team. They need to look after one another, James. And Fisher has got those lights blazing. That is for sure. So he's trying to put maximum pressure on McDonald. Problem here for the world's fastest Pizza Hut delivery unit. Steve Charman with a bit of smoke coming from underneath that Falcon. So uh, might be a power steering line that's come off or something like that because it doesn't look like it's slowing him down too much. Did have power steering problems in race one. Warren Millet, wake up Commodore is zeroing in. 20th in race one for Warren and he'll pick up a spot here pretty easily, I would have thought, because that Pizza Hut machine is struggling its way up Mount Strat, although its power is not too bad. It just doesn't look the part. Back to the top at the cutting. McDonald and Fisher. This is close. Fisher's got a bit of speed on board here too. And what a great return to the series for McDonald. Leading so far. Obviously started off the front row courtesy of the reverse grid format, but uh, has been doing a great job all weekend. And love the look of that sort of camouflage mango credit. Falcon, that's for sure. I've got a feeling, though, that Fisher can spot it. He knows where it is. He's closing in. Well, if he couldn't spot it with those headlights, he'd be in big trouble. <laughs> McConville still running third. The Bundaberg Commodore. Cam's making his 20th start in the great race this weekend. Just his second appearance in the Utes as they tumble off the top. Now, the question is here, where does Fisher go for a move? He's got pace, but he needs to pick his spot. Down a forest elbow. Not long to go. He's having a look. Oh, he's locked the rear. He's oh, no, that wasn't in the manual. Now, more contact coming off the elbow. Oh, well, that's going to be an awkward debrief after the race. Definitely 
never want to have contact with your teammate, but Fisher, a big move up the inside of Forrest Elbow and uh, into the side of his teammate. But that's the thing. I don't think he meant to really do the move. He was out of control trying to stop. So that's given McConville a run on McDonald now. Also into Caltech's chase. Oh. McDonald eating tough around the outside. Very brave. Fastest corner in the country. Uses all the curb to help turn the car. McConville can't get past. And have a look at Hanson now. He's got a bit of a run on the Bundaberg Ute. But Fisher has cleared out. Wonder. Oh, McConville squeezing. Hansford for Rubin to the final corner, Murray's corner, so it's come alive this race. Just when you thought it was safe to go back into the woods and it was all quiet and fair, the Ute boys have got stuck into it at the front. We're on our last lap now. This one will be called one early, but Fish is gone. He's at the fastest lap of the race. He's the only man in the 234s back on lap three. Here's the move that I don't think he meant to make a move. It sounds like he locked the rears and that's got him sideways and Really, here's a better shot of it. So, yeah, locks the rear tyres. And uh, it was fortunate that McDonald was there for him. That was a bit cheeky. He didn't give him enough room on the exit. But uh, if Gary hadn't have been there, I'm sure we would have seen Fisher in the wall. So uh, he's lucky that his teammate was actually there. I think under the V8 supercar way of thinking with teammates hitting teammates, that would be allowed to be OK. We've seen that precedent set in the past. I think Andrew Jones, driving standards observer, and the Utes officials will look into that one, no doubt. He did gain an advantage by belting a car off the track. I don't think he meant to do it, but he still did it. No, it certainly wasn't intentional. He was having his own moment. It was just unfortunate that Gary was in his way, but uh, this battle for third position isn't over. Final lap now over Skyline. McConville just pulls a couple of car lengths on Hansford into the dipper. Just behind is the race one winner in the pole man, Ryle Harris, who hasn't blitzed his way through, but he's just picked them off one by one. Done when a very, be. Yep. very calculated, smart drive from Ryle so far. And this will give him enough points to solidly sit on the front row for the final race, which is uh, really the most important. Payday is uh, Sunday, so you want to give your best chance at, at taking out race three. Final time down Conrod Strait. And Andrew Fisher, they went the wrong way with direction of setup in this car in qualifying. They've gone the right way in the races. He's in the lead, in the chase, and on the final lap. Got enough of a margin. Back to McDonald. Was that Hansford locking up? Oh, McConville's wide. And Cedar's, Cedar's locking up too. Out and through the grass for Cedar, so we saw him do that in race one. It's fast. But his teammate, his teammates are going to go one, two. Andrew Fisher. Final turn, Jesus Ford picks up the win. And Hansford almost gets past McConville for third across the line. Can't quite do it. So the Bundaberg Commodore home in third. Hansford next, Harris then in fifth. McNally, Pretty, Cedars, Walton and Craig Donis rounded out the top ten in a pretty lively second half of race two. Andrew.